And let's welcome to the stage your first team, the Hangzhou Spark. The Hangzhou Spark, fourth in 2019 and fourth in 2022. They are looking for their consecutive, consecutive fourth placement here in the playoffs. This was going to be the year when Lee joining the team from Chengdu Hunters, pairing him with Shai for the most lethal Chinese damage duo we have ever seen. They reversed off the Atlanta rain yesterday, but it doesn't get any easier in the brackets from here on and now. Boston Uprising is going to be a very tough opponent. And now, their opponent, the Boston Uprising! This team is stacked from top to bottom, whether it's the support line, the damage duo, or the tank. Every single player on this team can make magic happen. They're a team that you can never count out of the fight. I don't care how many players are down, they will brawl back. They will make individual plays. Every single one of these guys is not feeling the pressure. They have been here before, time and time again. I don't think there's any fear on this team going up against the Spark. And here we are, the stage is set for the Spark and the Uprising to clash and to settle the score here and now. How are we feeling, Toronto? Who you got? All right, let's try it again. Do you have the Boston Uprising? Little delayed response there. I'm curious what the second one's gonna be. How about the Hangzhou Spark? Oh boy, oh boy, the crowd is fired up. Everyone's ready to go. And I know our casters are ready for this as well. So let's send it over to your cast for this one, Vicky Kitty and Necra. Thank you so much, Golden Boy Toronto. Thank you for welcoming me at my very first Overwatch LAN. I am so excited to be standing here with my duo, Negra, to bring you guys the Hangzhou Spark versus the Boston Uprising. Toronto has been so fun to be at in terms of a city, the fan base that are here in the arena the to boot. celebrate incredible Overwatch play. And it is such an honor to be back after that summer showdown last season, especially to celebrate two of arguably the best teams at the playoffs right now going head to head. I mean, after the matches we've already seen play out, Atlanta right? Reign, nowhere to be seen. Hanjo Spark reeling after that insane upset, now to pair off against the Boston Uprising. The analyst desk covered it amazing, Necro. We see the flexibility from the Uprising. We see what Smurf can bring to the table. Are we going to see that match after their adjustment against the Ryan composition, now dealing with the Spark and their pride and true dive comp? What's really interesting is that our very first map pick for this series is going to be Liu Shang Tower. Boston Uprising already want to try to give it to the Hangzhou Spark, especially when you know that they have been one of the top dive teams in the Eastern region. Whether it's been Gushui on the Winston or the Doomfist, he's shown up in such a big way. And he was a key piece of how the Hangzhou Spark even got the reverse sweep yesterday versus the Atlanta Reign. But it really is all eyes on the Boston Uprising. If we expect the Hangzhou Spark to come out with some type of dive comp. How do Boston Uprising decide to approach that? I have goosebumps right now. Seeing how everything has played out, we've had so much diversity in all the compositions that we've seen thus far with our teams, sticking to what they feel like is the strongest for them. We've seen the Jugger Queen before from Smurf, Gushue. Maybe rolling out on the Doomfist out here. Let's get started on our first round of Lijong Tower. The gates are open and the teams are locked and loaded as they head over to that central point. We're going to see Boston Uprising beat the Hangzhou Spark to the punch as they start to get their composition set up. Knowing that Burgring is on the Bastion, they're going to want to try to place him farther away from the point so that Hangzhou Spark have the tough time being able to approach that Bastion and just a huge source of damage for the Boston Uprising. This is going to be a little bit of a stalemate while well, Hangzhou Spark wait for those cooldowns to be online, but oh. the K is going to pull the trigger! Oh, they found the opportunity! They destroy the backline off the rip with Boston Uprising! An explosive start to take control over this point first. Dealing with the front line right afterwards, it's going to have to be another reset here for the Spark. Starting things off strongly for the Uprising. 
Uprising are going to take first control, and are they going to keep it? Bird Ring has been such a consistent threat looking at the compositions of the Boston Uprising have been playing. Whether it's going to be the Bastion or even one of those long-range hit scans, Bird Ring is such a force to be reckoned with. And Gushma is going to have a tough time. You need to invest all of your cooldowns on this Doomfist to be able to even get close to the Bastion. Especially when you know that you also have Izayaki as well to help bolster up the defense of Boston. Bird Ring is going to be such a tough piece to take down. So let's see if Hunchus can get it done this time around. Saw the shout coming out already in the back line once again. The first two to go down. Boston Uprising have their priorities, and with Monk going down again after the performance we saw from Monk yesterday, so important with those sleep guards and those antis being the first two alongside Lensa to go out in the beginning of another fight. And this is where it starts to get really rough. Boston Uprising already almost have 50% of this first point. And when Izayaki still has yet to throw the amplification matrix at the mix, Hangzhou Spark, like they gotta start throwing resources at this fast or it could get really out of hand. Oh, especially with Bergen right here in tank mode. Definitely lighting up the way, putting in the pressure, building up the space. Sound bear from Lee Gone as he goes in from the flank, finding Monk once again, who goes down. The duplicate was used up by Lee right before getting booted out immediately afterwards. But the damage output from the uprising, the pressure is way too much. Even with the rally coming in right afterwards, it's just a nail in the coffin while Bustin' Uprising managed their way to nearly 80% already. It's just going to be a final fight so far as Boston Uprising has had every single response in the book to deal with Hangzhou Spark and been able to throw at this situation. Decay does go down, not able to be able to deflect away that focusing beam, but Boston Uprising have such a commanding point presence. How are they going to deal with this when you've got a rampage in your face? The rampage right through the doorway, through the choke, finding three. Monk in the line of sight from the carnage. The Smurf shout, overtime ticking away. No one in sight. They find these individual picks, but nobody from the Spark could even put a toe on that point. First round dominated by the Boston Uprising, 0-100. Boston Uprising just played goalkeeper at that point. They were bodyguarding that away from the spark. And what a dominating performance that we saw from them as well. I mean, Lee Gone and Decay are two of the best duos to just go up against any team that they are in front of. You've got Lee Jagon on the Lucio to help speed you around, and Decay so slippery when it comes down to that Genji. Smurf is just so good, Necra, at controlling so much space. You saw the setup with the window into the Bastion tank mode. It's so much damage to worry about here. But this is where things start to get really tricky. We're heading over to Control Center. This is a classic map that you see teams come out of the gates with on a brawling composition that we're seeing from the Boston Uprising. But Hangzhou Spark, they're going to play a little bit tricky. They've got the Wrecking Ball from Gushui out of the gates, hoping to disrupt some of this front line. But Boston Uprising aren't giving up an inch. Look, it could be a little annoying. We saw it happen in our last series with Mag trying to disrupt the piece, but that did not work out for them. Monk does find the trade off to Decay, but the number advantage is in favor for the Boston Uprising, while they chase right behind Gushui, just trying to shimmy shade his way, slide over to the side, break up some piece and the distraction. Although, you already see Lee gone, taxing along everybody else to keep them at this choke, with Bird Ring being set up and mowing down Shy as the first pick again. Bird Ring has just been an absolute menace to even have the investment of the immortality fields to be able to keep him alive. And that is just giving so much space for Bird Ring into Decay to just continue to get these takedowns. Hangzhou Spark, they were able to walk away with a ton of damage in that fight. Leave is going to have a pulse bomb heading into this next one, and Gushui is going to have those mines up very shortly. So a lot of ways to be able to control the space in this territory, especially when this point is even more enclosed. There are not too many ways that Boston Uprising may be able to escape this, but Izayaki's getting ready to pull the trigger first. Actually, absolutely, he's got the window ready to go up the immortality field as well. Leave does get that pulse bomb pick onto the cave, through the window into their soul. They have to separate, giving away some of that space, even with the minefields behind their back. Gooshway going around. They find the pick onto Lee Jae Gun, only leaving Fiziaki to support until he gets taken out by Leaf. Some signs of life being shown from the Hangzhou Spark. They use that minefield to actually sandwich it from behind so they couldn't rotate away. Minus that one window that was already controlled by the Spark. It was fantastic positioning coming through from the Spark to be able to nail that, and it was just with an investment of two ultimates. So you still are looking at the Captive Sun, as well as the Amplification Matrix being 
being online for the Spark, and that's what this composition does best that they're running. They're running a dive comp, but they're putting a heavy investment into the pick potential, especially in the back line. Oh, no, coming down, coming in from the sky. Immortality field being used up, but the blade is used too shy. No worries, presence of Decay with the deflect finds Monk. Smurf follows up, and they clear the point in another team fight win just to retake this point from the Spark. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you've got those heavy investment ultimates online, if you just have Decay in your back line to be able to take you down. And now Boston Uprising as well with the point flip have so much else to be able to throw at this next fight. You're going to be able to see the zoning ultimate come out from Bird Ring on the Bastion and Smurf just looking for the setup of the Rampage too. Take to the skies as Monk dodges around there as Leaf going in for the flank. He's got that pulse bomb ready. The Rampage coming in, finding Goosh Range shy. Brutality was used though, right to help them out, but it's not enough sustainability as Bird Ring comes in. Hand in hand with his bestie Smurf to clear out the front line, thanks to that window from Izayaki. Again, it's that damage output that just mows down that front line. There's just so few options that Spark have to be able to go up against this. If they want to try to sustain through it, I mean, what, are, what can you really do? You've got the Immortality Field, that's a great way to be able to help yourself, but you need more than that. When you use the Immortality Field to deal with the Rampage, and now you have to deal with the Window right afterwards, you're basically left with nothing but to just displace yourself, and that's what Don't have a defensive ult. Exactly. We're gonna see here, DJ Gon's got the sound barrier ready. Activates it already too to help out the Uprising contain themselves in this pressure, finding Shine. Shout just to keep Boston Uprising from moving forward a little bit here too. Immortality Field used right afterwards with Izayaki, but Spark lose out on two. Shy now, overtime, ticking away, burning away as a Hangzhou Spark with only Monk alive can't even touch the point. What a dominating performance on map number one for the Boston Uprising. Boston Uprising, what a way to kick off this series, especially between two Titan teams that are looking to secure their spot in that final bracket. And oh, they just basically didn't die. They just didn't die. Their survivability was insane. Decay died four times, yeah, but you know, he had to put himself in this vulnerable position to be able to get some utilization from the blade. But Birdwing with his damage output, I believe died once or twice there. Lee Jagon also with only one death. The survivability in comparison to what we had seen on the other side, unfortunately could not compare. Love the way that they were also able to rotate the, the utility. We talked about the lamp. We talked about being able to option coverage with the window right afterwards when you have nothing else to help you out. It helps when you're able to invest so much into your DPS to ensure victory. You can see how much the team was working together, whether it was some type of amp it up coming through from Lee Jagon to help get these key pieces into position, or even if you just saw an immortality field get popped down to keep Birdringer Decay alive in the front line. It was so much teamwork and such a commanding first map. Hangzhou Spark are going to have to come out with something special to be able to deal with this. I mean, Smurf is just in his element right now. This team loves to play aggressive. You're, they, they're the only team that have been able to take down the London Spitfire so far, who also play an aggressive game. Links are going down, and Decay being the insurance needed to make sure he absolutely was going to go down here. And then here comes the Blade. Even right through that window, not caring, oh. going right behind him in the deep light onto Monk. That's dirty. Beautiful. And then also, when you have a force through these chokes, where you have no other option, yeah, you could go over to the side, but Smurf is staring you dead in the face with that Rampage ready, looking so good, opening up the series in such a dominating fashion. I will say, one of the best things about this format that we have is that it is loser's pick and Spark have decided to take us to King's Row. So maybe they do have something secret sauce up their sleeve just yet, as that, we take a look at that pick. Got some verticality. I'm excited to see how this plays out for the Hangzhou Spark. We're gonna have to see on the other side of this break. We got game number two.
with a team full of MVPs, Roll Stars, champs, and pure skill on this roster, can you expect any different? This team was always a team that I had my eyes on from the very beginning of the season. A particular player that I want to highlight, though, Necra, has to be Birdring. When we got to welcome him back after retirement coming into this season, we wondered, was he warmed up against the best? Well, absolutely. That's why he's here, standing here currently right now. 21 Elims, 10 final blows. Birdring is one of those players that when he got brought back into the Overwatch League, a lot of people weren't sure what to expect. Mm. It's been a few years. Does he still have that star quality power that he was able to show off during that inaugural season of the Overwatch League where he was able to take home the crown? He's back, baby. Oh. He's back. He's oh, back man. and he's ready to perform. This is playoffs bird ring that is sitting on our stage right now. And what a star performance from him on the Bastion to kick it off to just start this series. Right through the window, too. I mean, we've seen this combo plenty of times before. We saw Bastion, Baptiste make their way in unison together. And it's an onslaught of damage that you have to consider, especially when you're forced through those chokes in Lijiang Tower. But we are moving on to King's Row, Sparks Pick. This is Spark's pick, and I want to see what they do to be able to deal with this Bastion. It was such a big problem for them, taking a look at that very first map. How do you approach the Bastion? How do you limit its ability to just sit in the front line? You have to be able to close the gap somehow. Let's talk about the comp that brought them to success against the Atlanta Reign. They had the Tracer from Lee. We saw the Soldier Shy with the nosebleed after the pressure of their first match. Gushui coming in on the Winston after originally opening things up with the Orisa. Langsa coming in obviously with the Brig. Monk on the Ana performing to the best potential that they can. And with the verticality that King's Row provides here, Necro, I can expect to see this echo persist here. I don't think that they're going to end up continuing with with like the, the specific thing that we saw come out on that very first match for them. Like that reverse sweep was great, but even you heard Jake bring up on the desk, like was that something that we can attest and attribute to the strength of the yeah. Hangzhou Spark? Or is it something that remains to be seen just given where Atlanta Rain ended up falling in our standings already? But Hangzhou Spark, I mean, what a way to be able to put shy on some of his best heroes. Whether it's the Sojourn or the Ash, it's going to be such a great pick, especially when you take a look at how Boston Uprising like to be clumped together. But that's not what we're seeing right now. We're going to see that quick pick of the Widowmaker just to see if you can get a headshot, see if you can clear somebody out of the lobby right away. But it's going to be more of the dive, this time from Boston Uprising, bringing out the Winston pick. Smurf getting melted down just a little bit. She's gone. Well, looking right through the window, it's going to be Shy taking onto the high ground on this Ash. Shui also taking a good amount of damage as the bubble has already gone down for Smurf. K also trying to find a flanking angle right behind Lengsa. Shy wanting to hold onto this high ground while Smurf is also trying to contest for that space. Dives right on top of Shy. They get the trade of a bird ring. Boston Uprising have a spawn advantage right behind their backs. Gushui also navigating away here as Izayaki finding Gushui in the back over to the side room. Get the anti, but the Troy would leave right behind them and the focusing beam is going to be able to melt down the back line here for the Uprising. Huge takedown of the back line there is going to send Boston Uprising back to spawn to figure out another attack attempt. And Huntress Spark are playing this so smart. You've got Monk set up in the back line where he's not super accessible. And even if he does get dove upon, you have leave playing that arrow unit in the Echo just to help try to chunk somebody down, whether it's with the Focusing Beam or the Sticky Bombs. But we're going to see a bit of a reposition here from Smurf as he tries to jump onto the high ground. And, uh, well, you just take care of one piece of that problem. Well, you deal with Leave, and although you missed that Pulse Bomb here, Smurf gets put to sleep. Gushway had used a Meteor Strike, gets the finish. Lee Gong going out. They trade that as Shy meets his demise. Leaf is about to have the duplicate and the rally coming in as Monk had boost up the Nana Boost earlier on. And Anti though with them stuck in the side room. Lengsa can't get away. Smurf is finding them in the pits. All hands in the air. The back line gets taken out from the Spark and the Boston Uprising with all this extra space and the bubble by the choke point are going to be able to get this payload moving out of the garage. Yeah, that's going to be first point captured as you just see. Ziyaki making sure that that's going to get right underway. And with Boston Uprising now, they can play around this overclock from Birdring. Sojourn has been such a strong pick for him. 
And with that overclock available, you're just able to set yourself up around this very first corner, make sure you've got that strong positioning. But that's why Leave is trying to focus him down first. Also using duplicate immediately, but Lee Jagon answers right back with the rally, putting some space. Burberry has that whole unlock here. Decay nearing that pulse bomb. Backing away as Gucci takes a quick little nap here. Activates it, boots lead right out of the duplicate. Well, Decay finds legs, so they trade that brick for brick, but the numbers are not in favor for the spark. Gets hit against the wall, but where is your team to follow up? The finisher winning blow comes in from Decay, cleaning up three. That's what it takes when you have these dive compositions going against each other. You're going to have to give and take a little bit when it comes down to your back line as well as who is going to be dealing that damage in the front. So maybe you do have to sacrifice somebody to be able to move that pillow forward and actually get to the greater good. But when it comes down to both of our teams now, you've got Shy on the Sojourn. So let's see how the Sojourn versus Sojourn works out. Leave has also switched off of the Echo to go over to the Tracer. And so it's just classic dive out here in this mirror match. And with the Nano Boost, that's going to be the green light to go in as the K wraps around. It's the other side of the sandwich. Gets the Pulse Ball pick onto Gushue. Monk may want to hold on to that Nano for the next fight because the K is going crazy. Finds another three lined up like a stack of dominoes as Boston Uprising nonstop have now taken this payload beyond the second point. Now they've got over four minutes to work with to be able to capture the third. And that is a ton of time, especially when you look at them already being on that rotation of ultimates. Hangzhou Spark just switched over to this composition not only a team fight ago. So they're still trying to figure out how they're going to actually get this rotation through. With Monk having the Nano available as well as Shy and the Overclock, this could be a way for them to do that as Monk goes ahead and donates that Nano over to Gushui. <laughs> Fighting inside of the bubble, duking it out as Gushui has to back away after the Nano Boost runs out. The rally from Langsa, but Shy gets called off, domed by Birdring with a charge shot there on the back. Smurf activates Primal, waving around all the Spark, displacing them from the back. They do lose out on Izayaki. Lee Jae gone. almost about to survive before Leaf gets that melee, then finds Burberry right afterwards. Leaf coming through to save the day for the Hangzhou Spark. Gushui had used that Primal earlier on, and with Shy and Leaf still holding on to those ultimates, taking a quick little nap, trying to get away and avoid that anti, taking any more damage. This is where Hangzhou Spark are in their element. This is the composition that you called out at the very beginning of this map, saying that this is one where they were able to reverse with the Atlanta Reign. And it was because of how dominant Shy was on that sojourn. He ended, at the end of that match yesterday, ended up having something like 56, 57% charge rail accuracy. And that is elite right there, being able to get that pick on the Legion gone too. Just trying to block off their exit route here. Shy had that overclock ready, just waiting around the next corner. So that that charge shot while Birdring tries to navigate away. Controlling so much of the space here in general. Leave and Shire still holding on to those ultimates as well, but Uprising has a plethora to work with here. Birdring activating the overclock immediately right afterwards, trying to block Shy from the very back. Shy trying to retaliate right afterwards. He's got the window right to his left. He needs to navigate away, but you have Shy finding the game. Leave with the pulse bomb. Going crazy is Leave consistently holding them at this choke alongside Gushui. Boston Uprising is back to the drawing board. It's the comp that they were able to find that success with from the spark. And you can see why it's working again. What? Look how much difficulty Burger King even had juking around Shy and just start trying to take his head off in that match. Now you have to go back to the drawing board. Boston Uprising, they have lost half of their time bank entering into this third point. Decay does have a pulse bomb. This is where Boston Uprising can really start to open things up, but Decay has got to hit this onto somebody or at least disrupt them enough for Smurf to be able to use this Primal Rage. I always love seeing me some Tracer 1v1 action happening on the other side. The Primal activated from Smurf, gets put to sleep. Nice shutdown from Monk. This is what we like to see, but Shy goes out from Lee Jae Gone fighting in his face. They trade that for Izayaki. Decay still holding on to the Pulse Bomb here, but it's about clearing that space around that next corner here. Well, Decay had sent out that Pulse, didn't get the impact that they were looking for. The Rally being activated may actually buy them even more time. If you take a look, a minute and 20 seconds left on the clock for the Uprising. The Pulse Bomb did net them the Rally, so that is a very valuable ultimate off of the board that Hong Show Spark no longer have the ability to work with, but that doesn't stop the fact that they have three more in their pocket. So when Leave is now the one that has that Pulse Bomb in his control, and he popped off yesterday. 
to get to manage to get away, but the save cannot be said for Lee Furgering. Knowing exactly where he wants to blink away. Is Yaki fighting Lisa? The numbers in their favor. Even after Monk has used that nano boost onto Gushway, he's gonna want to hold on to that primal around this next corner because here comes Furgering. And he's got the straightaway now too. It's gonna be a scramble for Hongjo Spark to get back out of the spawn. You can see Smurfs trying to body block that door. They're gonna have to try to go around to the left side, but Gushway has this primal rage to help start to stall this point. Here comes the rally and the nano boost from Izayaki here. Smurf hugging those spawn room doors, jumping in with the primal. It's gonna be Gushway gets put to sleep from Izayaki. The numbers as they go down. It's Smurf finding Monk, finding the backlight from the spark, only leaving Gushway and nobody left to contest the point. Boston Uprising take the payload to the finish line. And they've got a couple seconds to spare as well, so they are not in danger of not getting that next chance. Now it's Hongjo Spark up to the plate, though. And I want to see them come out with that Winston composition right away. It felt like a bit of a mistake not being able to pull that out in favor of the Doomfist. Doomfist does have a few more corridors they can work around on that first and second point, but the Winston, that was what Gushui really showed up on yesterday with. And you can see how well he's able to control that space and also work with his Winston bubbles to help deny that healing potential coming through from Boston. You're also just dealing with the uprising backline if you do try to ever roll out with that Doom. We saw how constantly they were getting shut down by Izayaki with his sleeps. Lee Jae gone, constantly there, babying Izayaki too. Smurf with the backup to help heal for that backline. Seeing right now, Boston Uprising sticking to what's worked for them as they should here. Wondering if the Hanjo Spark may end up sticking to what we've already seen the success reap them the benefits right here. I think they need to. If Shy, especially on the attack, is able to get one pick, it's like the Widowmaker effect. If you can get one, that is a great way to start to snowball your push. And if you can keep that up, then maybe you're able to just go ahead and sink it in a little bit faster than the Boston Uprising. But you do have to capture all three of those points. So let's see what happens as these gates start to open. All right, everyone's going to taxi up onto the high ground before making the swap potentially here. Leave is going to be going right back to that Tracer. We saw so much success on that third point, but Decay had opened up so strongly and Shy is. opening there up is. with the first pick. Huge, despite even the anti. Doesn't even matter. Boston Uprising dropping and allowing the Hanjo Spark to speed run their way to get this card. Shy with another one. Gujway following up. The entirety of the Uprising nowhere in sight. That's the Sojourn effect right there. See, when Shy is able to play the Sojourn, Shy let's go. You can see how much support Shy has in the arena right now. And it is for picks like that that are going to just blow these doors wide open. And Hangzhou Spark, they've got five minutes and 40 seconds now to be able to work through this second phase. And they are also starting to get those ultimates online. Ooh, I love how aggressive Boston Uprising was in taking this position, though. This is the difference maker. When they got the car out of the garage, they were able to clear so much space with Smurf, the same cannot be said for the Hanzo Spark by this choke. And that's the benefit of dying so early, is that Boston Uprising are able to play such an aggressive game. They wiped fast and they regrouped so that they could have this closer defense. And take a look at Smurf's positioning right now too. He's just gonna go ahead and try to jump down top of them, but Leave already took out the back line. Oh my, with Gooseway and Monk popping off Leave. Finding the last end of the uprising, Monk is having another one of those games that we had seen earlier on yesterday, now replicating that before our eyes. That's the power of the Ana. I mean, you were able to talk about that from Izayaki's point of view, where Izayaki was landing such critical sleeps onto Gushue when he was ulting, or even just taking a look at some of these other ultimates coming out from the spark, shutting that down. But take a look at Leave. Sneaky Leave. Oh, he's he wants got to that get pulse set up. bomb. He's he trying. wants somebody in the back. Finds a K who manages to get the health pack first though. Forces him to use a recall first. Uses it second so that way he could have the advantage for retreating right back to the point. Data boost now from Izayaki onto Smurf who has so much survivability potential here. He's got the primal that he's forced to activate after getting hit with an anti. Spark lose out on Lexa who would have had the rally for this fight. It's about managing backing up at this point, giving this team fight win over the Boston Uprising, but huge anti right before Monk gets taken out for Hurst. I mean, look at how much respect that Boston Uprising have to give over to Shy Sojourn as well. That was a primal rage into a corner plus an ante that came through just to be able to take out that player in particular. 
And now you have to look at another setup, but Hangzhou Spark, they have yet to use any of their ultimates right now. Boston Uprising, they've been playing smart. They've had great conversion. Wow. And there's another one. Oh, going down when he would have had the overclock here. The cheers from the crowd as Leaf, with the success off the pulse, just managing to get the space that they need around that next corner. The rally to answer back from DJ Gun. Now using the shield bash. Bubble on bubble. Looking like a compare contrast table out here before sending out some more space for Smurf. To get good amount of damage to K going out from Leaf, winning the 1v1 Tracer duel over to the other side with some help alongside Monk. Still holding on to that Nano Boost, by the way. And Gooshway being able to have the number advantage, they're going to hold on to it for the next fight. And that's just going to be a point capture here as well. There's not too many more opportunities for Boston Uprising to start this cart from rolling over that finish line. And you're going to get that payload unlocked. And now let's enter into the third. Boston Uprising up to this point have done a great job of whittling away at that time bank. But now, onus is on them. That's going to be an over four minute time bank that they're going to have to stare down the barrel of as Hangzhou start to wrap around that first corner. Birdring has the overclock. How much can he get done with this ultimate? So what has he done before? Mana boost onto Gooshway though. Trying to contest. Haruki can stare at his face, but he's safe right behind Lee Jae Gon while Izayaki put the Nana Boost onto him. Rayboss coming through, and it's the respect given from the Spark as they navigate away. Patience paying off as they find the pick onto Decay. Leave now, trying to come in to retaliate right alongside the rest of his falling teammates, though. With Smurf taking a good amount of damage, Leave being able to get to that health pack. Smurf was just dancing around the edge of the shield, and Leave is going to have to leave him alone. Another defense coming through from Boston. Have to go back to the drawing board, but Hangzhou Spark, like, they're still playing this so smart. Both of these teams have to jockey for position here. You're gonna see Smurf take control of this high ground for now, but Gushui is gonna square up to him to try to wrestle that away. Boston Uprising don't have a choice here except to start to back off and give up some space to the Spark so that they are not caught out of position. Uh, look at where Leave is. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Smurf is not the perfect target for that false spawn, but I think he could also take it. The few mosquito bites before Gushui jumps onto the high ground, activates the primal right afterwards, disrupting the piece and forcing them off from the high positional advantage. Birdring, though, with the charge shot, fighting shy. Lei Gon still holding on to that rally. Spark understands playing at that number of advantage, though, backing away before they use Flensa's rally to then retaliate, re engage. But it's the patience from Boston Uprising wasting away from the rally that they could be getting positional advantage on. Oh, there's the Nano too. Nano boost, yeah, Decay having the bullet bomb, trying to nail down Lengsa, gets the stick though, onto him right afterwards. Perfect positioning, an anti onto Smurf, but no follow up potential as the backline from the Spark get deleted. Two minutes, less than 15 seconds on the board for the Spark. Boston are just having fantastic ultimate conversion. Every single time that they use one, it's either getting a player down or, or they're pushing the Hongjo Spark back. And, and Spark there, like that rally felt so minimal in comparison to what was coming out from the Boston Uprising. That's such a key defensive ultimate as well that you would love to be able to have for something like the Overclock, but now you just have to scatter. Oh, Overclock from Overclock, but he's shy! How shy to go! Putting himself on the board, making a statement. Not only finding Bird Ring, but Lee Jae got on top of that. Gooshui says, look at me. I'm here too, and the Spark now gets to clear this corner. This is starting to look really tricky too because now it's on Boston Uprising trying to get out of these spawn doors to come in for the recontest. But that's a huge anti! Nice anti from Monk onto Burger and Lee Gon, but nothing to follow up just yet. Leaf is about to get the pulse bomb online. Minute and 20 seconds. Look at the payload as Decay manages to contest while looking at Gooshway jump onto the high ground. Calm before the storm here. Give it a second. Decay's hunting. He wants it. Leave is going to have a swing and a miss. I think I got hit by that anti earlier on for Lengsa. Retaliate on. Smurf holding on to that doorway though, having to back away. Gooshway. It's dangerous to load just at first, but had Monk and Lengsa in that side room alongside him. He's about to get the primal here. So that survivability is going to be on point with less than a minute on the clock here. This fight is going so long. Bird Ring's oh. gonna be the first kill. That's a huge first pick here for Bird Ring. It's a K getting the follow-up onto Lengsa. Boston Uprising having to K here to clear the way, to clear the push from the spark. Now they have less than 30 seconds. And look at Smurf's positioning. And that's the danger of that fight going on for so long is now that time being 
League is starting to expire. And Bust and Uprising are getting the upper hand here. Take a look at their ultimate economy. They've got so much to throw at this final fight. And Hangzhou Spark have nothing. Monk's going to have to give over that Nano to try to get Gushui into the front line or just to save somebody. And that might not be enough firepower to get anything else online. Monk has that nano boost. Five seconds. Five seconds left for them to touch here. DJ got to activate the rally, forces up the recall, but Leaf drops up from the high ground. But your backline gets annihilated. He's Yaki Lee Jay gone. Throw everything at Smurf had the primal. Like you said, Necro, they had everything ready for the spark. That's the Labisa for Rio Gushue as Boston Uprising successfully hold back the Hanjo Spark for map number two. That was such a clean defense. That was such a clean defense coming up from Boston. They're starting to look a little bit tricky on that final point there on their attack push. But they were able to get the job done and that was exactly what they needed as well. Now they're at match point. They only need one more map win, Vicky, and they go to the final bracket. That's what they're playing for right now. Playing for the money, Necro, because once they move on, they're in the top four. They are guaranteed money at this playoffs. So much on the line, because also, the loser would have to play against the London Spitfire. Yeah, I don't want to be there either. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what team right now wants to play against the London Spitfire after that incredibly dominant performance earlier today. But it's, it might not be Boston. And Boston was the only team that has been able to find that success to take them down. And, and maybe London's also going to dodge a bullet here too. But Boston, I, there has just been such clean, cohesion, teamwork. They have great target focus, and they are locked in. They know what they're playing for right now, and if they get to that final stage, that's going to be such a relief off of their shoulders. And it's not been easy, though, either. No. Like, Hongshu Spark has put up such an intense fight in this series already. And now that they've gone over to that composition that they beat the Atlanta Reign with, they've looked even better on King's Road. That was so competitive. The individual pieces on the Uprising have always looked like Titans out here, and they are looking to continue on this domination as they currently sit at match point. We are moving on to our third map, onto Suravasa. That's going to be coming to you guys on the other side of this break.
Austin Uprising, Riz up, because they're here. This team with insane talent, here to stay, smurf the go, really putting on a performance here, showing that flexibility to shine through for the rest of the flexibility that that's, this entire team provides and brings to the table. Smurf has played so many different heroes this season, but one of his absolute brightest has been his Winston. And you've got the stack card to be able to back it up, too. I mean, so many great exhibits of his play in this, even just this map of King's Row, where, like, just take a look at how busy he's keeping the back line. Like, Hongjo Spark, Poor Linksa and Monk are getting bullied back there. <laughs> like, I can't even get away. Like, every single time, like, they're just getting absolutely stomped by these Winston jumps. Monk and if playing. you're, like, if you're getting distracted by the Winston, you're not a healing. No, Monk was playing Frogger, trying to get away from the pressure of what we were seeing from Smurf. Decay coming in on the other side, not letting him escape. But it's that pressure. He put on so much damage on the board. Had like 42 Elims in that last game. But we are moving on to Flashpoint, which is the Spark territory here, where we got to see them doing an insane reverse sweep against the Atlanta Reign, game number one in yesterday's day one match. This is where that reverse sweep all started. And maybe they still have that buff in them yet. They have not lost a Flashpoint so far since this game mode has been released. And they have had some tough opponents as well. They've been playing this in such high intensity environments as well. They were there for the knockouts. They watched the play-ins. They've seen other top teams have to perform on this map. And they were able to take down the Atlanta Reign yesterday, even when their backs were against the wall. So Hangzhou Spark, let's see if they can do it again. Shai's already hovering over that sojourn that was so impactful in that match yesterday and even made that King's Row game so competitive. But Boston Uprising, they're going back to their roots. They're going back to the brawl that started it all in this match. And let's see if Decay can come out and perform on the Genji once again. Ah, the Decay Genji, always love to see the Smurf, Junker Queen as well, already moving out, rolling into that middle point here onto Market. Let's not waste any more time. Bushwe as well being on the Doom. Doomfist versus Junker Queen. This didn't really work out for the Hongshou Spark on that very first map. Boston Uprising rolled them on Li Shang. But this is a much different environment. You have to play around so much architecture on Flashpoint, and this is so fast-paced that even one wrong move, maybe even one pick from Shy, could completely turn things around. Oh, oh, oh. oh and the follow-up from Leaf. Face of the devil. Oh, it's a bird ring. You whisper it to the air, but Decay has other plans. You see some trades coming in, but nobody left for the uprising other than Leech. Hey, gone, saying he's actually gone for real here. <laughs> Gooshway backing away. Now you see him, now you don't. Literally a frog out here as the Hangzhou Spark take control over the point first. Great control capture for them as well because that gives them such an edge when it comes into these next fights. You know that Monk, Shy, and Lynxer are not going to be too far behind to be able to join them in the fray, and that's going to be a clean 5v5. And when you're looking at Shy just needing that distance anyway, this is a great setup for him. He's got to find this off angle, though. You can use those power slides to help change that rotation. And Boston Uprising now have to try to access somebody with this rush, but Decay's already anti. You can't Ooh. deflect that, Bird Ring. And the follow-up with the focusing beam into the duplicate right after losing out on Monk, only leaving Lensa for the sustainability for the rest of the Spark. But the numbers being in favor for the Spark out here, bring him right back. Gooshway going crazy, finding the support line up here from the Uprising. It's another reset here for Boston, while Spark win another team fight. Leaf has been so creative with these duplicates as well. Looking at the Bastion on the other side, and Birdring was playing that on Li Shang, and then going ahead and taking the Junker Queen. It's just been so smart when it comes down to the picks of what to use that duplicate for. And every single time, it's about the value conversion of those cooldowns. That's why we saw a lot of teams opt to try to duplicate the Ana, because one sleep, one nade, just one extra skill can be such a huge boon in these fights. Yeah, with the Shout and the Dragon Blade to bring you all the way back. You're in a horror movie out here. Monk finding Smurf. 
not having the funnest time out here. The backline meet their demise. Meet Smurf right back in the spawn. Gushui punching his way to annihilate the rest of the competition. The Spark dominate on this first point of Flashpoint. How do they keep doing this? Gushui has been so good on this Doomfist. And you can really tell how the architecture of that first Flashpoint helped him out when it was just came down to using all of those punches to just bash people into a wall. And now we're going to head over to that top left corner of the map. It's going to be ruined. This is another small flashpoint. A lot of great areas to try to punch people into. And Decay's got this blade, though, but can he get anything done? Oh, so the shout to put them into position. Decay from Sound Barrier using the blade, slashing his way to find Shy. Alongside Birdring, who's about to get the overclock with the charge shot, finding Leaf. Boston Uprising finally gets some room to breathe while managing to maintain their positioning on that second point. But this is a point that's much easier for the Hangzhou Spark to get access to. You have a lot of characters that can just fly around the architecture. Take a look at Leave on the Echo. You can just go right over the top and try to return the attention away to the actual point. But Boston Uprising, they are going to play a little bit more far forward and aggressive, but Gushar's not going to have too much trouble getting in there. You can see how they are rotating through these skills, like the disruptor shot there from the Sojourn. Just because Boston Uprising don't want to sit there, but Birdring's oh. just going to get that snipe. The overclock shooting ducks in the sky, but wow, what an anti from Monk after he used a nano boost, finding four out here, then putting Smurf to sleep right afterwards. But is it going to be enough? Gushui to help him out. Also, the meteor check to reposition just in case. Birdring trying to navigate away after getting hit with an anti. Make way. It's Gushui. Sorry, Smurf. Trying to navigate away himself, but they get punched alongside Decay in the side room like a shish kebab. Served on a silver platter. It's Gushui making his way onto the point, but he's got to deal with Lee Jaegon, who's stalling for as long as he can. Uh, he's going to stall for a long time, too. I mean, that is just a player that had a very hard time actually getting down from from the rafters. But now Hangzhou Spark will be able to start taking control. Boston Uprising walked away with 99% though. And with the Rampage as well on such a small point, that could have huge value. So Hangzhou Spark needs to play around this. They don't want to stay on that flash point right now, especially when they're just going to line up in a row. Oh, the Gushui taking a much more aggressive position with the Rampage right through the choke. Here comes the K right alongside Smurf. The dash and the reset into finding Shy. Burgering, finding Leaf next. Boston Uprising had 99%. It was going to be so difficult for Spark to rotate through those ults. And now we are moving on to the next point. It is really hard to play around the Rampage. There are very few opportunities for you to actually get to that point that you're not walking through a tiny doorway. Mm -hmm. But now we do rotate over to a point that's a bit more favorable for those spawns of the Hangzhou Spark. Going over to Garden, this is going to play a little bit more open territory. And so this is a little bit better for Gushui to start kind of uh, rotating around the point. But look at that Disruptor shot. That puts everybody in such low range here, especially when they get Anti-2. Oh, man, with the Anti-2, Izyaki had just put down that window, and instead Gushui breaks right through it. Leave with the focus of Beam onto Decay. Izyaki makes a swap over to the Kiriko. And while Lee Jaegon is gone again, he will be able to re-engage in that next fight with the Sound Barrier as Izyaki actually swaps right back over to the map. The Kiriko would have been nice if you expect that fight to get prolonged a little bit more. You get back a little bit faster with a swift step. But that Baptiste is providing just so much utility when it comes down to the immortality field. And that's going to be really important as well when you just look at the fact that that's Great, a great response for Gushui, just kind of accessing your back line here. But Decay is another blade. This did pop off last time. Oh, they oh, Monk! Crap. No way, Monk! You're insane! And with some help from Lexa in the rally, the back line from the Spark oh, survives! Oh, oh. Shy sits down, Lee Jaegon, ties a rock to his foot, sending him right back to the spawn. Hanjo Spark. What an explosive answer to the blade that tried to open things up for the uprising. Hunks and Spark are just fraggers. They're so good at being able to secure these picks. And there's no more sound barrier, too. They try to put De Decay into that position. No blade, no sound barrier. Birdring has that overclock online for this next fight. Birdring is going to be able to get that online, but is it fast enough to be able to be in a position to use it? Smurf is already antied. The immortality field has already been forced out. Overclock used up too. The duplicate from Leap once again, copying the Junker Queen. 
Gu Shui finding Izayaki, oh! catching him in the middle of the air once again as he tries to jump away. Leaf comes in, and Gu Shui finding Li Zhengang before he manages to get away again. It's about sending a message here for Gu Shui as he moves all the way up after they get that point, already putting themselves into position for that next checkpoint. Yeah, I mean, that, that is a statement right there. We're already heading over to that fourth flashpoint, and Hongshu Spark could seal the deal here. We're going to head over to the top right corner. And we're actually going to soon meet in the middle here. The fight actually might take place before we even get to that point. As usual here for Flashpoint, finding some of these skirmishes, team deathmatch-like fights in these corners. Big rotation. Huge here with the Rampage ready. Ziyaki with that window too. Goosh way to answer back. Got that Meteor Strike to reposition. My eyes have been on Month this entire game. Nano Boost in the window here onto the high ground now. Goosh way finding himself around the lamp. A way to distract them as the Rampage comes in from Smurf Shy, try to get away, but Bird Ring with a nail in the coffin following up from that Rampage. Smurf can't survive through that. Beautiful anti in position from Monk, so that way Leave could profit, eat after whatever Smurf had left and the Boston Uprising managing to get to that point first, at least navigating themselves up to 35% before the Hangzhou Spark take over. Still finding the opportunity to do that though, but Boston Uprising have a lot of fight left in them. Lee Jae gonna hit the sound barrier. Sound barrier, Decay's about to get the blade here too, but they're gonna hold on to it for that next fight because they clear the point from the Hangzhou Spark. They go out with a team kill in the favor of Boston Uprising, and Lengsa will have that rally as well as Shy with the overclock and Lee having that duplicate for the next fight. Boston Uprising are just in such a great position right now though, because with Decay having the blade, you can just pull that so early as soon as Hangzhou Spark already make their way in. Like some may not even have time to be able to use this rally to save anybody. But but watch Lee. Lee is flanking around. Pay attention to uh -oh. this back line. They are in danger. Oh, and it's because he's got that duplicate too. He could put himself in a riskier position as Langsa had used the rally. Tries to go in again, but Monk is his nemesis staring in their face. It's Gushway punching his way through Izayaki and Bird Ring. They get the trade onto Shy, but the number advances of Spark finally get back to this point, but 99% in favor for the Boston Uprising. Bird Ring is another overclock. That is a tool that Boston Uprising could use to get back into this one and tie up this flashpoint. But the past few times that he's popped that, Shy has just strafed. He stayed in the line of fire, and Bird Ring has been taken down before that foul ultimate has been able to convert over value. Maybe this is going to be a little bit different this time, but Smurfs over to the Doofus too. Disruption at play on both sides. Very quick here too, with Decay making the swap over the trade, so they know that they are not getting much off the blade. Here comes the duplicate Decay! As I said that, pokes his head out once and gets shut down by Shy. Burberry had retaliated, but Gushui once again finding this back line with another team by win could immediately reverse this point. This is looking dire. I mean, Legion has to go back over to Lucio just to be able to get everybody back to this point. And they're starting to run out of time. We are just five seconds away. Can anybody get there? Oh, just APAC things over time, ticking away. 99 to 99. Smurfs got that meter strike. So does Gushui here, putting himself into position, trying to navigate to the problem. Monk and Langsa, no more pressure, but Shy gets caught into it. Smurf finally finds him, and the back line is out. Overtime ticking away, and the Boston Uprising have done the deed to keep this flashpoint going. Monk just got punched into another universe right there. <laughs> Absolutely battered, but it does come down to this fifth and final flashpoint. As we head down to that lower left corner, let's go over to Palace and see who can settle the score. Teams are pretty equidistant from it too, but it does look like Boston may be able to beat them to the punch, and that's where you start to get this nice setup. Boston with this new flavor of composition they came out with. Got to get Decay set up here. Birdring wants to be on that back of point. And it's going to be a little bit more telegraphed where Hongshu Spark can come from. So forget it, this is match point for our final four here. Boston Uprising trying to punch their ticket into that top four, into the money. Izayaki's got that nano boost ready. Decay sends out the pulse. Doesn't find the stake or the pick just yet. But with a nano boost onto Smurf here, Gushui navigating away from the meter strike, but Monk puts him to sleep again. Wasting away the Nano Boost, perfect timing onto this, but Gushui doesn't get the help that he needs. It's a trade for trade though onto Gushui and Smurf. And Lee Jae Gun has the sound barrier. It's a rally enough from Lengsa. That's a spark with the pulse bomb. May have put a stop to that.
that run. Boston Uprising, nowhere here, as Leave is forcing them to the exit. Ultra oh, Spark were able to sneak that point away under Boston Uprising noses as well, so they're already going to start racking up that percentage. And they are so close to being able to get a map under their belt, so they aren't just sent down to the lower bracket of their group. As Leave also has the duplicate, there are a lot of great targets to choose from on the other side. We'll have to see what he decides to select, as these duplicates have been so good and so creative. But it's starting to come down to the wire. Can Boston Uprising get it done here? Or can Hong Jin Spark get back into the game? Monk's got that nano boost here. The duplicate has leaped up with the sleep. Once again, Monk navigating away in lengths to the right boss. The nano boost as they all funnel themselves in this side room. It's easy pickings for the Hangzhou Spark, nearing down 90% here in their favor to take another Flashpoint map that they found so much success on. Smurf is going to have to go into touch with Decay, but it's going to leave him so vulnerable to that sleep that came through. It's not going to be able to land its mark, but can Boston Uprising even contest this as a full team of five? They have to deal with Buck. He's been the problem, the consistent problem. Decay's got that pulse. Yaki gets hit with an anti. Using that recall, with overtime ticket away, but Smurf gets called out first. Links up with the shield bash. They trade that for leave after Bird Ring had made the swap, but no healing as Gushui slams down on Bird Ring. Izuyaki gets hit, manages to try to get away, but he's literally won. Nobody to touch the point. The Spark keep themselves alive. This is where it started versus Atlanta Rain. Flashpoint is where it all started for that reverse sweep to come through, and now Spark have got themselves on the board. And that dream of that reverse sweep is still alive. This has been a banger of a series. Ever since Hangzhou Spark switched back over to that composition and they were able to reverse sweep the Atlanta Rain with, things have been so, so, so close. How do they keep doing it? They're so good on Flashpoint and it's that momentum swap that keeps them alive. Spark, taking a breather before we figure out where we're gonna be moving on to next. Right after this, in that first series that they played in, they went to Esperanza and it was a very close game for them to overall. Finally taking a map here, we got to see a very strong opening for our team. The question is what Boston Uprising want to pick to try to close this out. Because they get a chance to pick this next map for the first time in the series. Uh, and do we decide, like, uh, to, to, to go to Esperanza? Like, do they want to try to give Ultra Spark that opportunity? Doomfist just plays so well there. There's so many incredible rollouts. And when you know that Gushui has been this huge threat in your front line with this Doomfist, I don't know if you want to give them that. I feel like Monk has been that problem, be too, just with some help from Gushui, but shutting down the Genji Blade. And then Decay pokes out his head once just to get shut down right after that. Get up to see where we're going to be moving on to as we move on to map number four. Arcus, it's going to be our push map. This is where it all started for the Spark. The script writes itself. And we are moving on to the six right at home here, going on to New Queen Street. Ooh, New Queen Street. That's spicy. You see a lot of teams like to play Doomfist on this map. So maybe we get a chance to see a little bit more Doomfist coming off from Smurf as well. If they want to try and match that. But they have the flexibility that could absolutely happen here for Boston Uprising. They just need one more game to lock their way into the top four of the playoffs. We have to see if they could close it out or we're going to see another reverse sweep from the Spark. Find out on the other side of this break. Proud partner of Toronto Defined. Bell, the official network provider. TD, the official bank. AMD, the official PC partner. EPOS, the official audio partner.
Hangzhou Spark refuse to lose. They need to give us more action, living their life on the edge in the best way that they can. Hangzhou Spark takes to Rivasad, having such an amazing record on Flashpoint, highlighting Monk and Gooshway coming through on the Doomfist. That Doomfist looks so good. Gooshway is one of the best to ever do it. I mean, I, he got robbed. I'm gonna say point blank, he got robbed of Rollstar. That's all <laughs> I'm gonna say. Because Gooshway has been able to play just so well on the front line. And if you watch how he manages those cooldowns, you can feel his presence in this server. Yeah, I think I think the fans like that too. I, <laughs> I'm here the fans like action. that too. <laughs> Spark says, you ask, we'll deliver. Love being able to maybe see a potential reverse sweep. This is literally the same exact situation that we had yesterday in the Spark series versus the Rain. Actually crazy to maybe see it repetitive here, but goes down to what the Boston Uprising are gonna bring to the table to secure themselves into the top four. There's a lot of money on the line, Necro. That's gonna guarantee you $80,000. That is what's on the line here for these teams, whether it be the Spark, making the reverse sweep once again, or it's the Boston Uprising sitting at match point. And it's a weight off your shoulders too, because you know that you don't have to play the London Spitfire <laughs> to get back into that bracket either. So that's definitely a huge weight off of your shoulders. As we take a look at our next map in this series, Boston Uprising up to pick, and we're heading just right across the street to New Queen Street. Love to see the continuation of the East versus West. New Queen Street is where the Uprising are taking us, seeing how this is gonna play out back back into their favor, especially after seeing some swaps at the very end from the Uprising. Saw the Doomfist mirror coming in at the very end. And that's something that I'm really excited about watching in this patch in particular. We all didn't really know what to expect coming into the playoffs because we have a brand new patch. A lot of our players are also playing to their own individual strengths but they're also playing comfort compositions. And so a lot of that, when you look at like the Hangzhou Spark, leaning more into like the Winston and the Doomfist dives, Boston Uprising has shown us so many different looks, but we're just gonna have to see what they decide to play because Hangzhou Spark, it feels like a bit more of a known quantity. You know they're gonna play some aspect of dive, but what do the Boston Uprising decide to do to match that? And they've shown us just like already, like four different compositions, four different flavors of that with DPS picks. It's every time they try to focus on the back line of the Spark, Monk and Lynx have something else to say, which has just been different when Monk uh, hasn't missed these sleep darts in all of Sudavasa, basically, for what, what it looked like, denying a lot of opportunity away from the Boston Uprising, forcing them to change. Shy is going to be on the Soldier. That's going to give you so much rotation power when it comes down to just running around the map. Shy as well also makes him a little bit of a difficult, more difficult target here for Burbank to hit. Burbank is already getting so low. Nice little anti onto Gushue and Lengsa, but it's the time and space that it buys in. It's Gushue. Gonna have to restabilize here. But this does give advantage, just getting a little extra push at the very beginning here for Boston Uprising on the bottom. That's okay though. I mean, Hunger Spark are willing to bide their time until they see that perfect opportunity, especially when you know that they're gonna be trying to go after Lisa Gone to the back. He gets so low. He gets a little bit of whiplash after getting whipped down from Langsa. Shy with the follow-up immediately as Smurf trying to retaliate. Gooseway clearing the bridge. A nice wipeout as the Hangzhou Spark. They do it again. They just gotta be patient. They just gotta be patient. They gotta wait their time. Like you said, they like living life on the edge a little bit. <laughs> Feel something. And, and they're feeling the heat right now. At this point, Spark. They do have that pressure of having to get themselves more back in the series. They already took that first map of Suravasa, but now they have to even up the score, and this is one way to do that. They're gonna start to round this first quarter as that first checkpoint is fast approaching. And Gushue already has an ult. 
Well, not too far behind. He's got a pick, too. Oh, you thought. You thought Decay can't harass my back line at the post from the leave. But he's leaving Jay gone. He's yet to use the Nana Boost before going down. But there's no opportunity to follow up. That's a Smurf leading the rest of the Uprising in the spawn room doors. Boston Uprising picked the Doomfist map. I think they're uh, feeling the hurt of that right now. As Hongshou Spark are going to be able to grab this first checkpoint, unlock those forward spawns. And that is all within two minutes of this map. They've got 57 meters under their belt and counting. As Hongjo Spark also didn't have to throw too much at this. And look at Shy behind you. Oh, good. He gets put to sleep immediately after trying to take a back end position onto the flank. Gushui gets shut down by Furring. On the charge shot here, he's also about to get the overclock. The rally used up from the uprising, but it's the space as they were playing split up here. So Spark to have to rejoin, recoup together. The reset as Shy finds him in the window before getting backed away. Finding them is Decay coming in, finding Lieb and Shy. That was a great first pick to open things back up, and now Boston Uprising can start to make that progress of their own. Hongjo Spark 2, Elite did get that far spawn, so he's gonna take a little bit to get back in. Smurf against Flesco, though, this is gonna be a high octane fight here, Vicky. Here comes that overclock 2 from Bird Ring, though, back and away right through that window, getting some progress on the bot. Good rotation. As Elite comes in, too, from the window, jumps in from the heavens to land the pulse bomb onto Lee J. Gun. Smurf gets put to sleep. He just has the bribe, but he can't even use it. He gets nailed down from Shy, finding this fight in that side room, fun group together, reaping success here for the Spark. Spark are gonna get that bot back over that midway point, reopen those spawns, and Boston Uprising have started to look at how to deal with this pretty quickly. We've got another meteor strike coming through from Gushway. Boston Uprising gonna play a little bit far back. Is it Yaki is on the docket? Oh, giving them a little taste of their own medicine before coming in on the top. The meteor strike, but they lose out on Langsa, only leaving Monk as he's getting juggled up like he's in the circus. Smurf finding all the rewards over here on the side, trying to contest him. It's going to be Gucci, he can't even escape. There's no health pack to his back. And Boston Uprising win another team fight here with this back and forth to get some progress on that boss. They need to get two team fights at this point. Try to match that progress, get that bot over that first checkpoint, and they're starting to be in a position to do so. Decay has a pulse bomb. That could be a great piece to help take down Munker Langsa in the back, but they've been tough to nail down. That has been a slippery backline, and Munk and Langsa have always had some type of response, and Decay doesn't even get a chance to use it. Oh, but the Nano Boost at least on the Smurf ball. Shy and Leave were trying to rotate from the back end here, managing to get away as Smurf dumps away. Gushui tried to follow him right afterwards, but it's about stalling as long as they can if they can for the progress that Spark already have on the bot. They can just start to play a defensive game. They don't need to make any more progress. It really is Boston Uprising that has to step up to the plate, show us what they've got. And that's gonna have to be dealing with Gushui with that Nano. Nano Boosty does get hit with the anti but Leaf comes in, swooping to find the pulse ball pick, the back line torn apart. Lee Chico would have had the rally in that fight if it would just be elongated a little bit when finding some of these trades. And now the Spark have cleared the next corner. Decay still has yet to be able to use that Pulse Bomb either. And that's where things start to get really tricky, is do you even get afforded the opportunity to use these ultimates when Hongjo Spark just keep pushing the gas? That's gonna be another huge anti that's gonna force out the rally from Lee Gone now. So at the very least, he does have that ultimate to help preserve that back line. How about Yuzuyaki at least a little bit? And like you mentioned, Decay's still holding onto that Pulse in the pocket. Bird Ring about to, get, about to get the overclock as a visor from Shy on that bridge. Decay can't even poke, but Lee Gong goes out and Burberry finds the mark onto Monk. Two out for the Spark, and Lengsa was living his life on the thread before getting taken out next. Gushui was harassing the other side of the bot before getting shut down himself. Uprising with some help from Decay, shut down that Spark attempt. There you go, Decay's on fire now. He's been able to do so much, you know, to lock down that back line of the Spark and just kind of dishing out a bit of their own medicine against them. Where if Monk and Lengsa are also being preoccupied, then they can't focus on making sure that Gushui can do his job in the front to help create that space. But it's still going to be a battle over this middle point. We're gonna be fighting in the neutral, just looking at Bird Ring to set up some of these picks. 
You're not gonna wanna stay in this rail car right now. I don't wanna put myself in the narrow line of sight of murdering there too. Gooshway does find Decay here, who once again tries to harass that back line. Still holding up to the overclock while Izayaki's got that nano boost just in case to have a Lijie gone or to help Smurf stay alive this in this next fight. Now. Here comes, oh my god, <laughs> what? This ends for murdering now. In this case, that overclock getting absolutely nothing down. This leave is gonna be able to walk away from that and like that just use the rally to put the spark into the best position. That was such a huge shutdown. Burger was frustrated. He's off of the soldier and he's going over to the Sombra. Just anything else to be able to deal with the power of this doofus that Gushui is bringing to the table. A quick hack onto something could be able to shut down those cooldowns. And Gushui is going to be that primary target. He's got to play safe. Nano over to Smurf. Nano with Smurf. Now the difference maker here in this side room finds Smurf the problem. He goes out with the Nano boost, not able to put it down. Gush right here on the other side, finds Smurf with some help from Lee J. Gun, who clears the side of the room. He also is going to have the rally for the next fight. Taking control over this fight is going to mean a lot here for the progress on the bot, narrowing down less than two minutes on the clock. Boston Uprising, they, they've got to get their grit together. Maybe being Bird Ring having this EMP potential could help swing these fights in their favor. But as it stands, Hongjo Spark have been able to play keep away with the spot for so long that Boston Uprising, if they don't win this next fight, they are in a huge world of hurt. Decay has this pulse bomb. Can he use oh it? <laughs> he got tossed left and right. He was not able to even find that mark. He was looking straight up at Lengsa, who with some help from Gushui and Lengsa together, they were able to force him back the ante in the follow-up to find Smurf. Beautiful here, Gushui using the meteor strike to isolate Izayaki. Why are you running? Find you in the side room exactly where I want you. Taking control over this fight with some help from Lee, Fossil Uprising are running away. It's gonna be another minute off the clock. Minute and 10, already in the neutral. Bird Ring has this EMP coming online, but he has to be able to find a way to use it. And even so, Hongjo Spark keep pushing this spot forward, but can they look behind them? They have to know. Less than they a minute have now to know. on the clock, too. And he had swapped at the perfect time since we know the Snowbird's EMP charge is slower now here. Waits to utilize it. Finds three. The follow-up from Smurf. Perfect communication. And in unison here, finding two. And they go out with some ultimates of their own, but they have less than 40 seconds now on the clock for this next fight. That's still going to be two fights if Hongjo Spark can get back fast enough. Gushui is having a hard time getting away, though. And with a hack, that could have spelled disaster. But Hongjo Spark get a chance to come back into this final fight with three ultimates on the board. And that's going to be 25 seconds and counting for Boston Uprising to get this first checkpoint and be able to close out this series. But Hongjo Spark are set up for so much success here. Oh, I'm getting a sense of deja vu right now. Looking at how close this is. And Nano Boost onto Smurf. Shy with the visor over on the other side, staring at Smurf straight in the face. He's about to get the meteor strike. He gets away. He forced up the rally from Lexus to help out Shy in that situation. Navigates on top of the bridge, playing extremely passively with overtime ticking down. That overtime could expire so quickly too, and it's just gonna be a rotation of bodies from the Boston Uprising on top of this bot to keep that overtime going. And Decay is hunting, that's oh. one down. Can Boston Uprising keep it up? Decay finds two, make it three. Goodbye, Gushwe. Uziaki's the only one to go down with four in the pocket. Decay clears out the Hanjo spark. Overtime ticking down, but they have to get this bot over to that point where we currently see the Hanjo spark sitting in. And Hongjo Spark still have one more attempt at this one because that bot is still going to take a second to be able to get moving no again. Way. The pulse bomb. Oh, he missed the anti forcing of the recall. He had to back away. That would have been such a big pick because Monk's got the nano boost. And goes with the case. No way. This comeback. Lee got with the rally, the anti onto Smurf, the Nana boost onto Gushui as he comes down from the heavens with the meteor strike. Lee Jae gone, literally won. He gets taken out Gushui, isolating Izayaki. The Hanjo Spark are doing it. Are you kidding me? EMP, the last saving grace with nobody left, and the Spark even out the series. Two versus two. They're doing it again.
they reverse sweat to the tournament favorites. And Boston Uprising right now have dropped two maps. Hondra Spark are really starting to pull things together. And maybe it's not a fluke that they were able to beat the Atlanta Reign and show us what they've got. It's 2-2. Two -two. It's a five mapper. It all comes down to this. I can't. I am appalled right now. The script writes itself. Gucci went absolutely insane. That was crazy. How do the Spark keep doing this? They just want to give more maps to their fans, obviously. They want to make sure that their fans get what they're here for, for their support, even hitting out another series. It's looking good for them. They're getting it done because they are a team with incredible players. We've highlighted Gushue. We've highlighted the back line. Monk and Langsa are doing it all. Especially when it comes down to how good Langsa is on the Brigida. You saw those whip shots. You saw those shield bashes just stun those members of the Boston Uprising to make them even more vulnerable. And you have so much CC coming at you. It's really difficult to stay on your feet if you're Boston. There's just so many things that you have to play around. And especially if you're just getting got pincer, like poor Birdring over here had just popped the overclock and all of a sudden Leaf is punching you in the face. It's not the doofus. And then the Birdring was so close to the EMP at the very end. Imagine pre-patch Sombra right here would have already had the EMP for that fight. What a difference maker that would have been. Boston uprising, even with the adjustments, falling short in a very close push map. Hangzhou spark. Can they do it again? We are moving on to our final map here in a tight series, Necro. And Escort is tough because what can you pick that's not a good dive map? And Route 66 sure is one of those maps. This is where they beat the rain in a close 3-2 on Route 66. This is where they close it out to be exactly where they are right now. It's can it be pick. enough to be in the top four to be able to get in the money? Well. With such an intense series on our hands, we're gonna have to see. We have a break coming to you guys soon, but when we're back, we got Route 66 on the horizon.
everything on the line on this final map here in the series to determine which of these teams will be sitting in the top four of playoffs? Who will be able to sit in the money? Or who is going off to face against the London Spitfire? This is where it all comes down to against the Fossil Uprising and the Hangzhou Spark. This match is going the distance as well. It is another map fiver on our hands. And it's the only situation that Hangzhou Spark know to be in. Both teams, Spark could get that reverse sweep under their belt just like they did to the Atlanta Reign. Or Boston Uprising can finally close out the series here and secure that spot. It has been a tough road for both of these teams so far in this match. Boston Uprising was off to such a great start in those first two maps. And it was up to the Hangzhou Spark to make those adjustments to put Shy back on the Sojourn just to be able to keep up the pace. And now Boston, they have got to get their acts together as we go to Rue 66. The crowd is ready and so are we. Top of the gas station to power up just a little bit here. Hongo Spark have all the momentum in their favor here, Necro. Boston Uprising coming in from the gates in such a close push map. It all started with Surovasa all over again. It's another break of deja vu here for the Spark. But this is where it all comes down. Have a bit of a mirror match on our hands. The gates are open, you heard the countdown. And Boston Uprising are first up to take that attack push. They've got Smurf on the Winston. No more of Doomfist versus Doomfist. And it's going to be a fight for this high ground over Big Earls and the Mines. Let's see if we can get set up for position to make that dive onto the back line. Isayaki and Leech have gone for Boston. Hongjo Spark has Monk and Lanksa ready for that ambush. Combo for the Storm as they wait on the high ground. You see the ping coming in just in case. A flank opportunity is provided for Decay. As Smurf tries to jump onto the high ground, gets immediately bonked as Langsa, making sure to take care of that. He does get hit with an anti from Izayaki earlier on as Smurf gets retaliated on from Monk. Which we still trying to hold on to that other side though, but Smurf finding the opportunity and with the bubble to isolate, Langsa gets the first pick, the follow up from Birdring to find Shy head after head, finding Gucci right afterwards. Boston Uprising with a beautiful opening from Birdring, finding three before clearing the space beyond this first check po checkpoint. Boston has always had a clean dive, especially when they have very strong attacking and defending sides. If they can get set up, they can ride that momentum. And they also have a chance to breathe. A lot of our previous map types, they've required a high level of intensity and focus. But Hongshou Spark are back. They don't want Boston Uprising to get this first point. Well, they try to speed run their way all the way over there. And although they missed out on that post, it's still the pressure as the cave finds Gooshway taking a nap from Monk. It's only the back line left. Unfortunately for them, Spark get cleared out in another team fight win for the Boston Uprising. That's going to be first point captured. And now those doors get to open. And Boston Uprising are looking at an opportunity to set up on this high ground. Hongshou Spark can't get out of the gates just yet, and that's going to provide valuable time for this cart to start to round that first corner. But Bergring has his overclock, and that can be such a big difference maker and a huge key. You see him set up on that bridge right now. He's got great vantage points over to where the Hongshou Spark might want to defend from. <laughs> Gushui, oh, stop! No, Gushui. The Nana Boost is forced out on some, from Monk onto Gushui, surviving as Leap comes in, finding Izayaki. You know he was screaming for help right there. Bird Ring taking out Gushui, but gets the trade as Shy was able to claim his life right afterwards. The backline from the Uprising holding on to these ultimates, though, when they come and re engage for this next fight against the Spark holding on to the high ground. There was a nice swap from Gushui as well, recognizing that the Doomfist was just not going to be able to get as much space as what the Winston can provide. And those bubbles. 
again, such a huge piece of Winston's kit. And the way that Bushway uses them is just so beautiful to help shut off the healing. We're also shutting off the sight lines. Oh, the Nano Boost and the Rally, though, coming in from Lexa and Lee Jae gone. But the difference was Uprising had that survivability with the Nano Boost in their favor first. With Luck going down, Bushway popped the Primal here to keep themselves in this fight. No overclock, though. No impact. As the case shuts down Shy, it's a little bit of revenge at the same time for the uprising here while clearing up some extra space. Burgering has been that consistent problem here as they clear up Gooshway, but they're just staggering through here. Boss and uprising looking great while they Burgering takes the high ground advantage. Gonna be one more attempt for Hongshou Spark to get back to this cart and have a defense of the second point. Leave has a pulse bomb. Maybe help to open things back up here, but Boston Uprising get to still maintain that aggressive position. As you can see them body blocking the door, Gushway is having a hard time getting out, and he's gonna be stuck up a creek without a paddle. Oh, the window to force him off the high ground, but leave with the pulse bomb onto Lee Jae Gone. This is usually how they get things started here. Is Yaki one before Leave harasses the back lane, takes them out, leaving Smurf susceptible and vulnerable to getting beamed down by Leave. He goes out with the primal in hand still, and Spark finally reel back. Oh, 0 .01 0 .1. meter. <laughs> oh, 0 0.01 meters. Expecting the C9 to happen, it can't, it can't in a playoff match. The pixel, right? pixel away, pixel away. Uh, but that's sometimes what it comes down to. And Hongshou Spark, in the nick of time, are able to maintain that defense. This point is still much easier for the attack. You can see how many routes of entry that Boston Uprising have to be able to get back to this card. And while it does start to go in reverse, Smurf is already back, ready to contest and get this attack push moving again. Okay, has that pulse. Ready, looking at Monk, who will have the Nano for this fight. Trying to see where he can approach from the high ground, and instead finds the stick, though the save! Actually insane from Monk, the reaction with the Nano boost onto Shy. Lengsa has the rally to try to keep them alive, but with an anti onto Monk, it isn't gonna be enough. Izayaki meets his demise, but he went down with the Nano boost ready while Leave gets a 3k on the board. No more backlight, make it a 4k. He's hungry for more. And they force back the uprising in another attempt, but they'll be able to come back with the backline ults. Yeah, but it's now just a minute left. Hongjo Spark have been able to whittle away so much time off of this time bank. Gushui is gonna have a Primal Rage that is a great sustain ult to just help juggle this cart a little bit longer. A Boston Uprising, like the Nano's great. Birdring has that overclock, but he needs to set up here. Oh, the anti though. Birdring Lee Jae oh, he, he can't set up. Gushui finding the opportunity to capitalize off the anti before finding Izayaki right afterwards. They had used the rally for what with less than 35 seconds on the clock. They'll have the overclock, and they will have that Nano Boost at least going into this next fight. This final fight for them to work around. One more fight. One more fight and attack attempt here for Boston on the second point. Birdring is gonna oh. try to wrap around through the mine <laughs> shaft, see if he can get the overclock into a nice angle. This does push the Hongshou Spark back towards the cart, but Shy has one too. And a boost though, the overclock, Shy jumping away. Birdring though, trying to get into position, while Bushui has the primal, forcing them off the high ground initially. Gay still holding onto the pulse time, the bomb too. Overtime now taking away. Having to be careful, Uprising have nothing. We while Monk is about to have the Nano Boost here. Lee has the pulse, he finds Birdring. No more problems. Four left for the Uprising on putting down the pulse bomb. The follow-up, finding Smurf. Lee Jae gone, absolutely gone. And the Spark successfully hold back the Uprising when they were a pixel away from getting to that second choke point. Fantastic defense from the Spark. And that second point is so hard to be able to defend as well. That was a huge time bank that the Spark had to defend that card from. You can hear the arena. All the cheers for Leave right Let's now. As he should. As he should. Out of the three pulse bombs that he attached, he was able to get four kills off of it. 
The follow-up potential has been amazing. The reaction from Monk into the save onto Shy with that nano boost was Chef's kiss on the timing. Oh, I mean, look at that. Oh. I love this side-by-side -side while we take a quick pause real quick, looking at Monk and the comparison to Izayaki. Survivability from Monk coming through, but it's the consistency on playing in an aggressive position, enabled with help from Lengsa, to allow Monk to shut down every dive attempt that we have seen from Boston onto this back line. It, it is rough. I mean, out here, when you are playing the support line in a dive versus dive mirror, you are so focused on whether or not you have to trade your life or if you're able to get away with more value. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of fans here, though, for the Hangzhou Spark. They've been very loud and proud in this match so far, and they are one round away from potentially being able to get that reverse sweep, but we are in a bit of a technical pause. We'll get back into the game as quickly as we can. Boston, too, I mean, this is still potentially like a, like a winnable position for them, but not if Leave is going to end up continuing to play the game like this. Leave has just had such an outstanding performance, and this was the call that you oh, yeah. made earlier today, Vicky. The 4K. Look at that, one by one like a row of dominoes. He was feasting, leave. Put everybody in the coffin at the very end here. We love to see the retaliation that we're seeing from leave. And the one by one fight that we currently also have between leave and decay. Leave just real quick, takes a little shot before making a swap. Just through the cracks, never know. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to come out of the gates with. You're able to put that Sonic era down, you get a little bit of intel on what the enemy team is running. They get confirmation of what they expect Boston Uprising to be on the defending side with, and it's going to be the exact same as what we've seen before. Boston Uprising right now on the defense are set up on Big Earl. Smurf is down already, and Hongzhou Spark are going to move quickly on this. Oh, the Spark with Gushway moving in over to the other side. They want to capitalize off of this. He's forced off the high ground originally from Lee Jae Gun. Now makes his way right back up. With a barrier two, just clearing up the space to prevent it from going over here. But Burn Ring ignoring Gushway, giving him a haircut while Shy was right on top. Finding Shy in this, it's a pick for pick. And they're able to move right back onto the high ground with Smurf making his position an advantage. Fantastic awareness from Boston to just be able to take that trade and wait for Smurf to come back. Wow. And Smurf is going to be putting in the work here as Monk does get shut down and Boston Uprising are going to send Hongjo Spark back to their spawn with their tails between their legs to try again. But Boston need more fights like this to keep it up. Oh, Shy felt his shoes were on fire real quick, just navigating away from the line of sight of Bird Ring, who's about to get that overclock soon. Izayaki with the Nano Boost as well in this next fight. All lies in Decay. Survivability is absolutely insane here so far in this game. About to get the Pulse Bomb ready. Shai's gonna have to keep tap dancing a little bit more just to make sure that that soldier can keep putting on some pressure. Izayaki has that Nano ready to go, so let's see where he's gonna give that over. Trying to nail down on Gushui. He's also about to get the Primo Monk as well with the Nano Boost to match out with Izayaki. Of survivability from both sides, a long fight, awaiting on the horizon here, jumping onto the high ground before getting booted up, activating the primal. Everybody gets tossed around. The Nana Boost has Bird Ring activates the overclock with the Nana Boost on top of it. Nails down Monk, then next to Shy. Who else wants a piece of Bird Ring here as they're forced to navigate away with a minute and less than 55 seconds on the clock for the Spark. Spark used a lot in that last fight as well. You saw the Primal Rage and the Nano, two ultimates that are supposed to provide over a ton of sustain. But Boston Uprising were still able to chunk through that. Now it comes down to the DPS of the Hangzhou Spark. Can they get this full spam online? Shy's gonna have the overclock, the disruptor shot to try to move Boston Uprising away. Ooh, leave. He sent out the pulse bomb. Langsa gets taken. Oh, he's yucky with the yeet of the nade finding him. And funneling him in this side room, Smurf denies the health pack, forcing him to back away, wasting even more time from the spark. About to be less than a minute on the clock, but Decay is feasting once more. Boston Uprising can taste it too. This is with that top four spot on the line. And Boston. They've got their fans in the arena. Want to see Boston shut it down here. 
giving them the energy that they need as Gushui tries to jump up to the top, but he gets not only slipped, but shut down from Decay. Shy activates the overclock, but they get the trade as Burry finds lead. No backline left for the Uprising. Alexa had the rally. This may be just enough here to force Spark to finally get to the top point. Why are you running, Bird Ring? As Shy finds him right next. Decay sends out the pulls, and forcing themselves just a bit back before re-engaging here before that first checkpoint. Spots want to try to shut it down now, especially knowing that Smurf has the Primal Rage. That is something that they could invest into this fight. And you're going to see Decay try to trigger the stop of the cart. But can Boston follow it up? If they're able to do it here, that's going to be a huge shutout here for the Spark. The stall in less than five seconds now on the point, sends out the pulse. The Primal activated, but Lee Shakon goes down when he was so close to rally. No overclock chance for you. Bird Ring as Shy finds him next. The Uprising are falling. Smurf does get that pick up to Shy. And while Gushe was literally a pixel of health away, manages to survive overtime on the clock. Better late than never, as I always say. And they are able to get to that first choke point. That came down to the wire, but Hangzhou Spark were able to get it over the line. And now we look at two and a half minutes added to that time bank to see if Hangzhou Spark can complete that reverse sweep or if Boston Uprising can shut the door on them. As Hangzhou Spark now, the momentum is in their favor. The wind is behind their sails. Monk has a nano. Gushui is going to have the primal rage. And that is so much firepower to be able to push forward onto this high ground. So Boston Uprising have to respond to this with that nano of their own. <laughs> Legion Gun has the rally. Hungry Spark fans hoping for that reverse sweep. But let's see them go toe to toe as this next fight is rare to go. Can it be done? Can they close it out? The nano boost onto Smurf. Looking at Lee, but isolating Lengsa and Monk with the barrier before jumping up to the high ground. Bird Ring gets that first pick onto Shy. A bit of extra time that Spark have built up for themselves. Now dwindling away before their eyes. For Gushui jumps right back onto the high ground. The survivability is there with a the Nano Boost and the Primal ready for the Spark. But Boston are buying so much time off the clock right now. It's already going to be a minute and a half. And now, Hangzhou Spark, they have to start pulling the trigger on some of these ults if they want to try to get this over the line with another attempt. They can't fall here. Shy says no. This is where it all starts. They just need to get this payload before that second objective. Going in with the Nano Boost. Shy activates the overclock. Whoa, finding Bird Ring. And with the round of Lee Jae gone, it's not going to be enough. No backline, no uprising. It's only Shy. And in the game of Shy, Hangzhou Spark have no issue peeking, have no issue looking at the golden box of victory before their eyes. 45 seconds left, and Boston Uprising still have one more attempt. But Gushui has the primal rage. You can see them going into their faces. Oh. Decay's going to have to step out to be able to touch the card and trigger the overtime. But Lee Jae Gun is down. They find Lee Jae Gun first. Izayaki was close to the Nana Smurf up the primal. Gushui was ahead in time. They get shy, but it's not going to be enough with an anti to Smurf. How long can he stall before the rest of the uprising find their way on this point? Before Lee Jagon is gone himself. Decay uses the recall. They can't touch the Hondo Smurf. Punch a ticket into the top four with another reverse sweep in the playoffs. Welcome to the East, where the Hanjo Spark, by the way, only scrimmed 1 and 18 since arriving in Toronto, apparently, by the way. Making two reverse sweeps, taking the Boston Uprising 3 to 2, where we will see Uprising face off against the London Spitfire. Oh, the run back. That's going to be a great grudge match, and I cannot wait to see that, but. Congratulations to Hangzhou. Every single player on that team popped off today, but one above the rest had to be leave. You heard the cheers, you heard the crowd. Every 3K, 4K, post bomb, you name it, that Lee was throwing at this match, you could feel that impact. And leave at the end of the day, 
He did everything in this match. From the 4K at the very end to Necro. I cannot believe the Spark do it again. The Nano Boost 2 onto Shy on the Overclock. Both Leave and Shy having their individual beautiful moments, but it was Leave coming in. My goodness. Four Pulse Bomb kills, five deaths, and that's comparing him where Decay was surviving for so long, but the eliminations, the follow-ups were there for Leave and the rest of the sport. And that was just Route 66 also. Yeah. That's not even counting the rest of that series. That was so close until Honcho Spark saw their path to victory, their path to success, and they got it done. That's another West team that has fallen to Hangzhou Spark. One of those teams that also just did fantastic at last year's playoffs. They made it to the mid-season this year, be able to play another international competition. West and Shambles, that's all I gotta say. They got the pink buff, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if maybe your hair uh, happens to contribute to it. I don't know. Hair but the is spark, full of secrets. I don't know what the, what the script is looking like, but obviously the Spark have it in their back pockets and always wanting to give their fans more when it comes to giving their fans even more maps. I mean, it's cool. actually insane to see what we've had from the Hanjo Spark man, bro. Yeah, I got to keep them on the edge of their seat, right? Like, yeah, give the, give the other team two map wins and then just pull the rug out from under them. Oh, but I mean, Boston Uprising, they played a phenomenal match today, too. And I think now this is the second time and the true litmus test to show that Hangzhou Spark really is a team to beat and a force to be reckoned with. And I cannot wait to hear more from this team as we head over to the stage for an interview. Hey, 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 look at this, guys. Give it up for the Hangzhou Spark. Absolute. Wait, actually, before I start real fast, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's just do this real fast, a little reverse sweep. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right, we, we're good now. We're good. We can start the interview. Okay, guys. Wow. Unbelievable stuff. And, of course, here uh, with Jesse for the translations as well. And how have you guys managed to do this again? Oh, two, and you make the comeback happen. Was it nerves? Was it something else that put you in that position? And how is the spark doing this yet again, another reverse sweep. 对，就是你们今天又面临零比二的这种情况下，你是怎么把这个比赛翻盘又拿回来的？就是你们开始是紧张吗？还是有其他原因？你们是怎么做到的？呃，首先我觉得我们是一个非常慢热的队伍，对，但是慢热并不代表我们没有击败那些队伍的能力。我觉得我们现在可以战胜任何队伍。So we are a little bit of a team that has a slow burn and even though we do take a little bit of time to warm up, that does not mean that we don't have the abilities to defeat the other teams. Wow, all right, hey, it's, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. I totally agree with that. Now, coming up next, you'll face off against either the Dallas Fuel or the Houston Outlaws or the Florida Mayhem. And I guess the question that everyone wants to know is who would the Hanjo Spark rather face between those teams. Doesn't matter, we want any team, we are ready for any team to come and face off against us. Awesome. Last thing, last thing. We have so many fans here for the Spark. Anything that you want to say to them right now because they came out to support the team? So we are, I'm so emotional, so happy to be here and I just want to tell all the fans that we are going to try our best and come in with all our strength at the end. That's all we can ask for. That's all we can ask for. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Well deserved. You earned it. We'll send it back over to the casters. Oh, man. What a hero right there. 
Of course, the emotions are running high and not a reverse sweep. It's got to be emotional. This is incredible. I mean, if we weren't Spark fans before, we got to be now. They're taking down one Western team after another. Can they repeat that again? It's crazy. Obviously, you were always a believer. Jump on the train. It's yeah, not too late. I'm on it. The I'm on it. Come I should have looked for Spark. Dang it. And look, uh, Danny. I promise they won't have to face the Lono Spitfire in the semi. So it doesn't matter, right? Come on. You can be a fan of both. Come on, Danny. <laughs> Join the Hangzhou Spark. I'll it's think about it. Time. I'll think about it. <laughs> I don't think you need much convincing. I think they have a lot of fans out there. I mean, you know, X is blowing up, of course, with uh, all sorts of reactions uh, to the matches we get to see from Spark these days. Kenobi, <laughs> uh, a true stan, a true believer. Surely not again. Yes, but, surely. Oh, yes. Again, indeed. And why not? I mean, why not? But it's, I mean, I mean it, is, it is crazy. Like, what are the chances of a team reverse sweeping? Back to back. It's has that been the done in the grand finals before? Back to back to I don't. I don't sweeps. think we've seen that in the playoffs before. Uh, max once we've had back to back reverse sweep, the, but I surely can't remember it. This is a unique. It's one of the most emotional things you can go through as a player to be playing in front of a live event crowd that is cheering you on. Right? This is like Hangzhou Spark feels like the home team here in their matches. The crowd is behind them, and for to you to pull that reverse sweep off. To, to, you know, feel that other people believe in you, even when it looks dark, and that you can actually make that real for your fans, for your teammates, for the people supporting you. That's one of the, the greatest things a player can experience. And to do that twice in a row against juggernauts of the tournament, I don't know what they're feeling back there in the team room, but this is the type of emotion that can turn a team into a champion. And I really think if Spark can roll with it, I, I think it, what you're up 2-0 against the spark. You're like, all right, guys, let's focus up. Everybody, yeah. everybody uh, <laughs> don't mess up now. Like, don't get complacent. You, seriously, you, you can't because yeah. these guys fight even harder with backs against the wall. <laughs> it's also like a huge emotional hurdle to know that you can bring it back. You go down 0-2, and that was in pretty like disgusting fashion. You were oh, down 0-2 yeah. there. Lee Jang Tower wasn't even close, right? And as we go through some of these early maps, it really did feel like Boston Uprising had their number. First of all, this Junker Queen composition coming out from the Boston Uprising, you're like, ah, oh, okay. Well, I guess Gu Shui, he just can't play Winston into this composition. So forced over to the Doomfist. But from kind of like map three on, Gu Shui on the Doomfist had like some insane performances. Forget about the Primal Blade. It's all about the Primal Punch from here on out. <laughs> Gu Shui had some Doom fantastic. Shui, let's go. Gu Shui, I'm, I'm fine with that one too. So Boston Uprising, they had some of these tools to be able to take down the Hangzhou Spark. But like I said, towards the end of the series, it's Boston Uprising playing Hancho Spark's game, and that's when they felt most comfortable. I think Lee was a huge X Factor here on Flashpoint, able to copy this enemy queen from Smurf time and time again, and get that queen ult off in crucial fights. And I mean, you add a queen shout into the comp that Spark is playing, and it can really get out of control quickly. That is what we saw on this map. And although Uprising, I think they like it did, they didn't look beaten. At no point in this series did they give up, did they give in. Spark had to fight for every single inch. It wasn't a momentum shift and Spark running away with it, right? Boston kept fighting back. They're a team full of veterans that doesn't give up no matter how far the match goes. And for Spark to stay ahead of that, stay on top of it is incredible. I think it was, I think Flashpoint was very important because I think that was a point where sort of Spark forced uh, Boston out of that Junker Queen and they sort of brought them to play the, the dive, whether it was a Winston at the end or even the Doomfist as we're seeing uh, right now on New Queen Street as well. And I think, I just gotta say, the last map, we were talking about how great Leave was, but Leave just was lights out. Look at, look at this guy just getting kills left and right. This he is was unbelievable. Amazing. This, this is why, was just... this is why he was the 2021 Overwatch Crazy. League MVP. Yeah. MVP performance. Not real. Right Not here. real. But I mean, on the other side, we saw a lot of standout moments as well from the Boston Uprising. So it's not like that they just crumbled and, and, and no, stumbled no. here. No. And quite frankly, if I were the Boston Uprising, I'd feel pretty good about my next match coming up. Honestly, I was thinking about I that. They're going, up, they're going up against London Spitfire again. Yeah, oh, Danny, third time. Danny, third Thus far, the and that's been working this. out for them. Let's take oh. a look at the bracket to see where we're currently at in this tournament. I mean, why not run it back? Every time the Boston Uprising faced off against the London Spitfire, they won it in a convincing manner. What will London do here? What, how, what can they throw at them? I mean, Ryan Rush. <laughs> I mean, there's only one answer. Right? 
two series in a, in a row going basically the same way with, with Boston running away 3-1 with that comp that Boston runs so suited to their strongest players. London, I mean, they have some answers. They have some strong plays against it. But I felt that, that Boston played even better in the second series. So London has to turn that momentum around. And I don't think Boston are going to feel defeated after that series with the Spark. They're still going to feel confident going into this. Yeah. London has to bring something unexpected out. Probably not in comps, though. It's got to be play style. It's got to be some new way to play. But it feels like have London not just explored every single bit of this Ryan comp? Is there more depth to discover? I, I don't think so. I mean, I can't imagine. <laughs> but maybe. I, think, I think they just bring confidence. They beat Atlanta Reigns. They're, know, they're, they're on the hives. <laughs> just go it again for the third time. But I think it's going to be hard because Boston is going to be very angry after, because they just got reverse swept. They're going to go in. Well, they might just well, go. Atlanta were out. angry too, but. You know, that's true. Yeah. yeah. We, it was so we said. But. <laughs> yeah, but Atlanta didn't face off against an opponent and they already like absolutely demolished just a day before. So, you know, I think Boston Uprising shouldn't feel too defeated, even though it was a reverse sweep. It, it Hangzhou Spark has been looking incredible. I'm very excited to see how far they can take it. For now, they are finding themselves in the semi-finals, and we have to determine a second team today, which will move on to the semis, and our next match will be fought out between the Dallas Fuel and, of course, the Florida Mayhem, and we will break it all down after this break.